Are you ready to change your habits? I sure hope so, because in today's episode of the School of Transformation, podcast episode number two, we're going to be covering the very important fundamentals of changing your habits. I don't care how sticky, how tricky, how stubborn, how impossible, everything I'm going to offer you today, the very simple, very effective tools will help you to co- totally transform your habits. I'm sure that you've attempted to start a new habit. And that usually entails something like you realize, wait a minute, I've been eating pizza every night for the past week and I can't stop it. <laughs> or I've been eating ice cream every night and I, so for some reason I can't stop myself. It's like my arm gets possessed and I'm in the freezer and I'm scooping out three three huge scoops of haagen or Ben and Jerry's, what's the deal? Or whatever it is, whatever your habit is. And then you realize that And then you say, okay, I'm going to stop doing this habit. And then you say, damn it, I'm really going to stop doing this habit. And then you try and you try and you try. And then you keep saying it. I'm tomorrow. I mean it. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. And then it doesn't work out. Or or any other way that that, that we traditionally try to master habits. A lot of us will try to master habits by writing them down in a journal and saying, okay, I'm not going to do this. Thou shalt not eat ice cream on a Wednesday or whatever. (laughs) Um, And that, that just does not work. It's because that's at the level of willpower. We're trying to tackle habits at the level of willpower, and that's just not where habits are formed. Your habits are not formed on that egoic, conscious level. So we can't tackle habits on the egoic, conscious level and expect them to change. And you're talking to a habit expert here. If there's one person that I know who knows something about habits, it's me. I Look, I'm not perfect. I'm not a guru, and I'm not here to... You know, I'm not here to tell you that I'm a guru, but I but I am here 100 percent to tell you if there's somebody in your life who knows about habits, it's me. I'm the girl. I'm your girl. I have successfully transmuted so many of my habits using the tools I'm going to offer you today. And I've been studying this stuff since I was 18 years old, probably earlier. And I'm I'm happy to tell you I come to you today. My only vice is Topo Chico. That's my only vice, and I mean that when I say it. My one vice is Topo Chico. Uh, my other vice, that's not exactly true. My other vice is I do like going to Whole Foods and buying <laughs> and buying um, that yacht yogurt, that yacht yogurt that I showed you guys in my coconut yogurt video. It's $10 a jar, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, Coco Yo. Oh, no, it's not Coco Yo. It's um, Coconut Cult. Jesus Christ, Coconut Cult. Come on. It's this tiny little jar and it's $10, but man, oh man, is it good. So that's my vice. I do find myself in the aisles at Whole Foods, just kind of like getting my normal groceries. And then somehow, oopsie, I end up in the yogurt aisle, my hands reaching into the, to the cocoa yo. And I'm like, oh no, they've got a strawberry flavor. Oh, it's, and all of a sudden I'm at home and I'm like, how did I end up with two jars of coconut cult, coconut yogurt? Okay, so back on track. Whatever your habit is, we can't change it at the level of the will and the ego because that's not where it's formed. So everything in life, everything in life, everything in life is an energetic process. The way that we're interfacing with the world is an energetic process. I spent a lot of time in my early 20s messing around with writing things out and doing declarations and affirmations and all that stuff is fine. All that stuff is fine, but that's not going to work on habits. Here's why. Habits are born out of resisting a certain emotion. And that's it. The only reason you have any habit in your life is because whatever that habit is, it's a band-aid on top of a certain thing you're resisting. You feel me? If you don't believe that's true, investigate for just one second. Take a minute and tell me, When you're about to do whatever the habit is that you're about to do, whatever your little addiction is or your big addiction, is is it is it true or is it not true that that usually precedes, not usually, 100 percent of the time precedes uh, the feeling of some kind of emotion like you might feel something coming up. Uh Oh, what's this feeling? And it's not even something that's conscious. You might not even notice it. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, wait a minute. Um, I keep doing this and I don't know why. If you just slow down for a second, pay attention before you do your habit next time you do it, or you can even think about it right now. 
you'll get some clarity on the fact that, oh, wait, yeah, there's some kind of weird lonely itch when I'm reaching for my phone, you know, or there's some kind of uh, loneliness when I'm going in the freezer to get that third scoop of ice cream or whatever it is. So all habits, all of them are there to suppress a certain emotion, a certain energy. And so in order to get free of a habit, we have to get the courage to allow the emotion that we're trying to avoid to the surface. And we're going to have to allow, allow that emotion to be welcomed and felt. When we fully welcome and feel an emotion, when we fully, fully open our hearts and our minds and our bodies to whatever it is we're trying to resist, instead of doing the habit, that's when the habit loses its, loses its power. That's when we don't need it anymore. That's when we can let it go. And that's when you don't even have to work at a habit getting out of your life. It'll magically just dissolve. It'll be like magic. So to put this into practice, there's a couple different steps to this. They're very subtle and and quick, but they they work and they're going to work quickly for you. So make sure before you do this, make sure you're good and ready to be done with your habit because not, not everybody's good and ready to be done with a certain habit. And when you start letting go of habits, there's an aspect of this where part of your ego dies. So it can be unsettling. It can be kind of uncomfortable. Part of your ego is dying when you let go of a habit. Part of your identity is getting thrown into the garbage. And that can be a little bit unsettling. And you'll notice that once you start doing one habit, they will start breaking off quicker and quick quicker. You'll start with small ones and then big ones and then bigger ones and then bigger ones. And before you know it, your whole life is different. So when I say tread lightly, make sure you're ready for a big, huge life overhaul before you start doing this work. I mean it because this stuff works and it's very simple. So here's, here's the process. The process is before you embark on your next habit, whatever it is, whatever the negative habit is, before you, uh, let's take a late bedtime, for instance. Like you want to normally get to bed. On, this is one I'm giving you because this is one I dealt with for a long time that I'm now free of because of this work. So you see the clock at 8.30. You want to get to bed by 9.30. Okay, wait, it's 8.30. I know I need to start getting ready for bed, brushing my teeth, flossing, taking a shower, whatever. I should be doing that now. But wait a minute. Let me just go ahead and check some emails or let me go ahead and start reading a book really quick and just taking some notes or I I had a habit of thinking of like all the things I would like to do except for get ready for bed and then before I know it it's one in the morning and I'm still doing what I'm doing <laughs> and that habit that habit went up and down for years of my life sometimes I'd find it six in the morning six in the morning and I'm still working let's say it's 8 30 and you see that you are about to go for that negative habit for that um, self-sabotaging habit you see yourself Okay, what emotion is arising? What emotion is arising before the habit? Because there's emotion, just pay attention. It's real subtle. You got to watch closely and it might not pop up right away. You might have to give it five minutes. You sit with it. Okay, watch it. Sit with it and watch it. What's arising? What, do, what am I uncomfortable with? What am I facing right now? You don't even have to name it. For the sleep thing, I couldn't quite name it. It wasn't like my mind was trying to figure it out. Let go of trying to figure it out. You're just going to feel into the sensations of your body. Because when we're trying to think things through, like, oh, maybe I don't want to wake, maybe I don't want to get to bed too early because I'm afraid of this, this, and that. And then you try to wrap your mind around all these different meanings. It doesn't matter. Let go of thinking and just go into the sensations or emotions. And then you might get some information from that process, which is great but you might not, which is also great. But we just have to open our hearts to be brave enough to feel into whatever it is we're trying to resist by doing the bad habit. And that is the only way to get rid of a bad habit. Anything that, anything that, works, anything that works for building a new habit, it's, it's in large part to do with some form of being mindful and noticing and transmuting that energy. So step one, notice. Step two, allow. Allow and welcome the energy, the emotion that you're resisting with your habit. Step three, choose a different habit. Choose a new way. 
we can't get to step three. We can't make a change in our habit until we do step one and two, until we notice it and allow it. And then, and then after we fully allowed it, welcomed it, allowed that sensation to be there, and dealt with deep, deep courage, the deep courage that it takes to feel whatever immense fear, sadness, loneliness, pain, grief, whatever it is, you allow it to be there. And then we, we choose when we thoroughly done with feeling it. And I mean, done when the emotion is done being felt, then we go into choosing a new one, choosing a new way, choosing a new behavior. Okay. Override. Let me get to bed on time. Let me get in the shower. Let me start getting ready for bed. I'm not going to go ahead and do that old stagnant habit. That's it. Anything more, anything less than that is not the answer, at least not in my opinion. I found that all the work that I was doing before finding this, I've used a great deal of this surrendering and releasing and allowing and mindfulness and meditation practice, which is basically allowing and surrendering and feeling the emotions that you don't want to feel over the past 10 years has helped me to successfully break free of an unhealthy sleep pattern, caffeine addiction, and unhealthy relationship patterns. Um, I could go on and on. I built a new meditation practice from it. I built a new yoga practice from it. I could go on and on of things that I've been trying to do for all of my 20s. I was trying to do all of those things in my 20s, banging my head against the wall of why can't I just get to sleep on time? That was a huge one for me. And sleep is so important. And I'm, I'm sitting here teaching health and fitness. It's so important to me, but yet I could not do it. I couldn't get my, couldn't get my ass to bed before midnight sometimes four, five in the morning. I couldn't do it. I was trying, believe me, my will, my willpower, I'm not short on willpower discipline, but I failed and failed and failed for, for 10 years. And then the past 10 years, the, the most recent years, my thirties has been a complete game changer. When I started incorporating mindfulness, meditation, allowing, releasing, surrendering, basically feeling the emotions that I was avoiding in my twenties, letting those emotions come to the surface, really feeling them through. That helped to change and transform all of my habits and helped me to adopt new healthy habits that I've been really wanting to do for a long, long time. And I'm just convinced that this is the way. Some, some form of this is the way. All the habit books out there, I'm sure that they're, I mean, I've read a lot of them. I read tons of them. They're, they have their place. They do. I mean, they have their place. Their place for me is like I gave all those two uh, half price books, to be honest. They didn't really do much for me except for give me a long list of things to do. And then none of the habits would really stick. And then once I found this, it's so simple, so elegant, so effective. So I hope this helps you. And um, the next thing I wanted to talk about in today's podcast is I wanted to talk about uh, the power of showing up as your authentic self. And this might be a whole separate episode, but I wanted to just touch on this because one of the members in my school, I've got a new community called the School of Transformation. And one of the topics was fear of the perception of others. Then one of, one of the students said, I'm always worried about what other people think of me. Universal, universal topic. So I wanted to talk about that because I'm sitting here and I've been doing YouTube for a long, long time now. And I'm always posting videos and I'm always, you know, posting videos and I've been doing it since 2009. So if you're watching this and you have a fear of how you're being perceived, I just wanted to offer some, some guidance on that really quick, how to break free of that concern. How can I let go of what people think of me? And one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually take action. When you notice that thought creeping in and controlling you, when you notice a thought of concern about what people think of you and then it's impacting your choices the way you show up in the world um you have to take action and counter that so do it anyway whatever the it is whether it's posting on social media whether it's getting on youtube whether it's speaking up at that meeting whether it's asking for a raise you have to just take the action anyway and that's how we break free of our fear of the perception of others how we break free of any fear and if there's an expert on fear it's your girl me. How you break free of any fear is to do that thing that you're afraid of. And also it's a really good clue when you're afraid of something that is something that gives that it's something that will give you a lot of energy. It's whatever you're afraid of. It just happens to be that thing that medicine 
that you're probably going to get a lot out of. And I've grown more and more like that over the past 10 years of really seeking out what makes me what makes me fearful? What am I afraid of? When I when I stepped away from this YouTube channel, I was terrified. And whenever I post a video, I'm terrified. Whenever I make a new project, I'm terrified. Whenever I've taken on any new endeavor, I've been terrified. But I've noticed that when you feel fear about what other people think about you, when you feel fear about getting out there in the public eye, when you feel fear about taking action based on the opinion of what other people think of you, you have to, have to, have to follow your heart and do it anyway, whatever it is, whether it's stepping away like I did for a little while, whether it's going, starting something new, whether it's, you know, learning something new, pivoting, like I'm pivoting with this channel, uh, but you have to just take take action, take action. If nobody likes what you're doing, it doesn't matter because that's not what your life is about. Your life is not about making other people comfy around you. Your life is not about hopefully everyone likes me because who cares? You have to lay with, with you in bed at night. You are with you 24 seven. It's just about getting out there, taking action. Go Go against that little voice that's trying to control you like a like a pawn. You don't have to worry about how people perceive you. You just worry about how you perceive you and you'll perceive you so much better when you're just taking action, doing that stuff that scares you. And then you get past that fear and you're like, well, look at that. Well, look at that. I'm, I'm okay. I survived it. I think that's about it, you guys. I mean, there's a lot more. To, there's a lot more to talk about. Oh, and obviously really important before I let you go. This is something I have to mention. I've poured my heart and soul into this new community that is the best thing I've ever done in my life. So my new community is called the School of Transformation. And I put this together for you, my friend. I put this together to support you in your body, mind, and spirit. So I, I'm, I'm here at your service to elevate you in body, mind, and spirit. And with my community, you get full access to all my courses, my entire course catalog. That's five courses right now, all covering body, mind, spirit practices. That's nutrition stuff. That's movement stuff. You get an at-home workout program. There's also the total transformation program. You're also going to get yogic practices. Plus, there's a whole community with live weekly sessions, group meetings, plus me. I'm answering your questions constantly in a video format or directly one-on-one. -on -one. So this is there's a lot to this community. And plus, there's so many amazing women right now that are just blowing my mind. I'm trying to give everything I have for almost nothing. So the price is founding member pricing. So I hope you join me at brennaturner.com slash transform. Come join us at the School of Transformation. We've got some really great events coming up and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know um, any, any ways that you like to change habits. Let me know how your life is going. Please post in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys.